What does it take to set up a virtual production shoot? Well, I'm going to show you every single step of the way so you can do it yourself. I've been working with this studio for the past month to get them set up for virtual production because tomorrow we have their first client. So the scene that we're going to be running is here at Bourne Studios on their brand new green curve. We're going to have our Unreal Engine scene playing back while the green is keyed out live. They're going to be lowering the blind out the end of the scene, just like that. And because it's semi-transparent, we should be able to see our Unreal scene straight through the window. We are going to be doing our camera tracking with the Lightcraft Jet Set app running on the iPhone. They are the sponsors of this video, but I wouldn't be using it on a professional set if it didn't work really well. You've assembled this. Yes. Um, where have all the pieces come from? So these little bits, like the phone and things were, were bought, we've put together the walls and the windows. I made the frame in Blender and then brought that into Unreal. And then we've booleaned the shape out so that you can see out into the sea. And then we just put a glass panel through. Jack sent me that scene that we just had a look at and we're going to then get that and put it in the phone. What we need to do, first of all, just add a basic actor and drag it in. So Jack tells me that this middle window right here is the one that we're going to be using for the main scene on the green screen. So what we need to do is place our actor just on the floor. Now I'm going to call it this very specific name. It's going to be scene loc underscore bridge. The scene loc underscore is the most important part of the name because that's how the Jet Set app will know that it's a scene locator. When we set our origin, when we actually start filming our scene, it will match up the position of the real world environment and this scene locator. Now that we've got this, all we want to do is export part of this scene and then send it via AutoShot into the phone. Sounds more complicated than it is. Let's see how that works. In Unreal Engine, we have a layers tab. So I'm gonna select everything in my scene and I am going to drag them from the outliner across into the layers tab. So we'll have all of the scene components and the scene locator all in this one layer. Now this scene is relatively simple, so I can do that. If you have a very large, complicated scene, only select the bits that you desperately need in order to compose an image when you're looking through the phone. But in this case, we can do this. And then we can go to our file menu, export selected, and then I'm gonna make sure it goes out to .usd and save. Now I'm in auto shot. AutoShot is going to find my bridge.usd file and we're going to turn that into a usdz file and then send it into the phone. Under the models tab, there's my bridge.usd file. All I need to do is click make usdz. AutoShot looks a lot more complicated than it actually is. When you know where all the buttons are, it's no bother at all. So that says finished successfully down the bottom there. That means that when I refresh down here, we have bridge.usdz. And all I need to do now is click push usdz to jet set. And then that's going to be sent over the local Wi-Fi straight to the phone. <laughs> it's actually that simple. As we've been investing into virtual production, we found the hurdles along the way. One of the main elements that we were ready to invest in was the live tracking on top of our cameras. And we want something, a solid solution that's not going to let our clients down, but also not let us down in any of our productions or any of our approaches. Let's set our origin. So we're going to have a look around. Here we go. Look around on the floor here, draw some grids with the phone, and then we're just going to tap to set an origin. So you can turn and rotate the origin point just by swizzling it around like that. So if it's not quite perfect, then we can always adjust it after the fact. And there's my window. <laughs> there you go. So it's currently backwards. I'm just going to turn it around 180 degrees there, just like that. And there's our window. I also have the ability to work with it as a green screen. So I can set my green color by just tapping on the screen in the green key menu. And there's our window floating in midair. Yeah. So now you're looking out. That's the one. Oh, wow. Can you actually? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So this can now clip right in here. But if we need to make any tweaks, that should stay nicely in position. Nice. Okay, we're ready to do some lens calibration. Sounds pretty scary, but it's really, really simple in this setup. So I've got the Aksu and Simo Pro mounted on the camera now. That's getting a signal from the main cinema camera and piping it through to the iPhone. The Jet Set app is gonna pick up that video signal and then allow us to both see through the main cine camera lens and the iPhone lens. It's gonna look at both those images and find common points between the two. So that's how it knows that we're tracking for the main cinema camera 
position and not the position of the phone. Go to the recording menu, then select Cine Calibration and then select New. And you can see under Cine 1, it says ready. So let's click start. We've got both video feeds coming through. The top one is from the phone and the bottom one is from the uh, Evo 1. I think I need to take about 15 images for this to work nicely. So let's take a frame here, click test frame. It can find 55 common points between those two images. If I want to keep the frame, I can click keep frame. But in this case, I'm going to click ignore frame. Let's find something else with maybe a little bit more detail. Let's have a look at the floor down here. Down here, I'm getting 85 common track points between the two images, which is obviously better. So now I just need to move around the same area, getting lots of different viewpoints with varying degrees of parallax so it can calculate everything we need it to. The next thing we need to do is click save, enter a file name. So I'm going to name this after the lens so we don't forget what our calibration is called. And then we click exit. If you look at the reticule on the phone here, that's showing you the field of view of this camera, which matches what we currently have from the camera view. So that's calibrated now. So we want to get tracking in. It should be coming from here, straight over the local IP, uh, local Wi-Fi. So this is connected to the same Wi-Fi as the computer. So let's go to Auto Shop. If we open web page and then go to settings, we'll be able to find our IP address and quickly check that it is set to this PC, save it. We just need to copy this IP address. That's what we're going to use in Unreal Engine. Let's quickly go over to Unreal Engine and enable the LowNet2 plugin. This is a free plugin you can get online at LOLED. I'll put a link in the description for that. Restart the engine. And when the engine's relaunched, just go to Live Link, Source, LowNet2, Live Link, and paste in the IP address that we copied. And you can see straight away we are getting tracking in. The plan was to render everything after the shoot using the path tracer, but we still needed a live preview for the client, which we'd play back on the TV. We used an Ultimat to do the live key, which we would record for post and also feed the footage across to Unreal via the Decklink 8K for the preview. So with footage going in, we also needed the tracking offset and lens calibration data from earlier for our Unreal Cine camera. We recorded a very short take with Jet Set, brought it into AutoShot where it does the full optical solve. Then we used a script generated by AutoShot to create the Cine camera in Unreal with the correct offsets and distortion. There you go. So that's our tracking. <laughs> I created a simple translucent material in Unreal for our Ultimat footage. The RGB input is linked to the base color and the key is our opacity mask. This was then played back on a plane in front of the cine camera. With everything working, we just needed to dial in a live link tracking delay to bring the video and tracking into sync. We weren't running Genlock on this shoot, so this was a bit trial and error, but worked well enough. So I've only just found this out. Apparently, the guys over at Lightcraft have developed a way so that you can always have your origin exactly at the same point. So let's say you have to close the app and, or, or turn the phone off and on or change a battery or something. When you relaunch, you can just use this marker that we've placed down on the floor here. If I just zoom in on this here and then click origin, I can just say align to marker and it will reposition the axes. Throughout our shoot, if anything goes wrong, we don't have to reset our origin in any more than a simple click on the phone. The client's going to be here in five minutes, so we're going to get some behind the scenes while we're working, but I'll catch you at the end of the shoot. There we go. It's been a hell of a journey. Um, I'm not lie, there's been a lot to navigate. Someone like Josh coming on board as a consultant has been um, second to none. Uh, he's been absolutely amazing. It's gone well. In fact, <laughs> Quite quick, really quick actually. Uh, we've still got hours left of the day and we managed to cover everything. But come on, we're gonna ask Chris how it went. What we're gonna do with our spare hours? Now, that could, <laughs> yeah, see yeah. as we managed to crack through <laughs> everything. Yeah, it was almost 10 videos done in six hours. So not bad at all. The alternative to that would have been us doing a lot of different fixed positions. It was one of the things that we were split between before we pressed live on the camera. Do we still keep it on the tripod and just embrace that time? Or do we take it off the tripod and flex and we flexed and it worked out really well. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Well, I'll see you on the next one.